Hello, and welcome to the topic of reverse engineering with the Zeiss reverse engineering software. In this video, we will explain reverse engineering with an example of an aperture. In the next video, I will show you the process tool correction. We will start with a new project and import the STL data of the aperture via drag and drop. The aperture consists of cones, freeform surfaces, holes, a plane, and slotted holes. Only the outer shell of the aperture was scanned. After creating the individual elements, we create the radii and a material thickness. The result is a, is a CAD as a solid. Let's start with the creation of the individual geometries. To create the cone, we have to select the areas of a cone. We use the dynamic subsection functions. For this, I select the function and click the STL once. The STL is now analyzed for its curvature behavior. After the analysis, I click on the area of the cone and select the max curvature, ABS. This is one of the most beneficial tools. Other curvatures can also be selected, added for the selection. By increasing the curvature value, it's selected additional points. After that, I select the cone element. Here you can also set constraints for the axis or position. Using generate best fit geometry. Repeat this process for the remaining two cones. To create a plane, I select the area of the plane. By increasing or decreasing the curvature value, you can influence the selection. Once the appropriate setting is identified, create the plane. You can see that we can create four element types here. Additionally, we have the possibility to create a STL from a, a selected area. Now we will look at the freeform surface creation. For the top area, for the outer area, a separate STL is needed for the freeform surface. Click on the area to create a new STL. The new STL datasets are stored at the Model Explorer. If you look at the new STL, you will see that there are still points missing on the outer shell. In this area, the curvature changes were too high and therefore the points were not selected. For this, use the conventional selection to add the missing points. Activate the point container, select the component selection, 
and select the STL. Now display the original STL. Switch to the selection in front and select the missing points. After that, create a new STL. Then the old one can be deleted. Now we will look at the freeform surface generation. I select the function approximation. For this freeform surface, we need the projection type cylinder to be able to create a closed surface. For a cylindrical approximation, we need to determine the axis direction and the position. For this, we will use the cone. For the axis direction, choose the geometry and select the cone. For the position, choose the center and select the boundary curve of the cone. Now the axis direction is set. If you don't have an element for the axis direction, you can also go to Calculate or Create the Axis manually. Now you have to set the segments. The number of segments has influence on the flexibility or accuracy of the surface. U and V can be set up differently depending on the characteristics of the data set. In the U direction, there are more curvature changes than in the V direction. U is circumferential and V is the arrow direction. Set U 120 and in V 10. After the calculation, an info window opens. Here you can see the average distance from the surface to the STL. Close the info window. The next freeform surface is easier. If you look at the STL, you will see we have very little change in curvature. We can now create another freeform surface with a few segments. For this, we will use the projection type plane, U30 segments and V15. Under define orientation, you can use the U and V direction. Now I have created a single element. For trimming, all elements must intersect. If this is not the case, the elements must be extended. To do this, open the extend function. Set the distance to 4 millimeters. Select the edge curve that you want to extend. Then select the elements and combine them. By combining these, it imprints the cutting curves and creates a new element. Then delete or hide the individual elements. The new element is in the body group. Next, delete the areas that do not belong to the CAD.
Now, in order to align the CAD on the STL, the boundary curves from the STL are needed. Select the function boundary curves from polygon mesh. Create a periodic spline with 100 seconds. The boundary curves are in the curves group. Select the two curves needed to align the CAD. Open the function project curves and select the CAD. Then delete all curves and after that delete the areas on the CAD again. Now we come to the holes and the slotted holes. These can be created with the feature extraction. Select the circle. Now you have to define the search area by clicking on it. If the preview image is outside the hole, you can create the circle. Repeat this until you have created all circles. You can adjust the properties, like the diameter, at any time. Creating the slots works the same way. Use the feature extraction slot. The slotted holes are in the curves group. Then select all the slotted holes, holes, the body, and project them onto the CAD. Now delete all the curves because they are no longer needed. Afterwards, the superfluous surfaces can be deleted again.
on the CAD, you can still see some selection curves. You can clean these up with the simplify body function. Applying the radii. Open the fillets function. With the control key, select the edges that should have the same fillets. Select 6 millimeters and execute the function. Now select the outer radius. If the preview does not fit, you can click on the preview window, but it has no influence on the function. Select an 8 millimeter radius and execute the function. Now that we have completed, completely created the outer shell, add a material thickness to create a solid model. Open the function body by thickening and set to 2 millimeters. Use the preview to see in which direction the 2 millimeter thickness is applied. Change to negative 2 millimeters and execute the function. After that, we have a new body. This is the final result that can now be exported.